Hey guys, it's Sweet Musings, and thank you for tuning in to another video. This time, I'm here to explain everything that you need to know about scrolling in the game to help you know which scrolls are the best for you. Let's get started. Now, if you played MapleStory for even just a little bit during pre-Big Bang, you should remember that butterfly feeling you got when you saw a monster drop a scroll. But you should also know that feeling of your hopes being crushed when you found out it's a helmet defense scroll. You might also remember the days of making a bunch of mules to farm up 60% glove attack scrolls, or scrolling your sauna overalls for luck for your Dex of Sin. Even though those days are gone, most of those scrolls still exist today on top of many of the other enhancement features that have been added to MapleStory. As the name implies, scrolling is a process of improving the stat value of your equipment through the use of scrolls and spell traces. There are normal scrolls that end up in your use tab that you can double click to use on the equipment that you want, and there are spell traces that end up in your etc inventory. You might have heard the item perfected weapon or perfected gear, and many different people have different opinions about what a perfected weapon is. Is an item perfected when it's scrolled with prime scrolls, x scrolls, 15% spell traces? It's definitely a subjective term in my opinion, but I just want to simplify everything and say that a perfected weapon or gear is one that passed every scroll from its available enhancement slots. Now with that definition you could even argue that a zero attack Garnier is a perfected weapon. But basically I'll try to explain my point through some examples. Let's say you have 8 enhancement scrolls on your weapon and you use golden hammers to add 2 extra enhancement slots. Or they fail, so use innocent scrolls to get all your upgrade slots back. Innocent scrolls reset all stats from an item except for its potential, flames, and soul. That means it resets all your scroll enhancements and even the hammers that have been applied. Alright, let's use a different weapon. I like to use hammers first before I start enhancing, because if we wait until the end and even if a single hammer fails, I have to use clean state scrolls to get those slots back. And that can be much more expensive than if we just had used an innocent scroll in the beginning and retried using our hammers. And now we just spell trace our weapon 10 times with 70% spell traces. So theoretically, by running some complex statistical analysis using RStudio, we should expect to see an average of 7 scrolls to pass out of 10. Okay, RNG Jesus blessed us and we passed 9 scrolls out of 10. We only need one more enhancement to perfect our weapon. Do you use an innocent scroll and try again from the beginning until you pass all 10? Oh, hell no! You want to use a clean slate scroll to be able to get your enhancement slot back and finish your weapon. To give a further illustration on scrolls, I'll try to give you guys an analogy, so hear me out. Innocent scrolls are like the trash cans chefs use if they mess up a dish. They can just throw out whatever's on the plate and start all over. On the other hand, clean slates are like the extra seasonings that you might add if the food is a little bland, or the extra water you might put into a soup that's too salty. Innocent scrolls and clean slates are also like the bread and butter of scrolling, because they're useful for all types of scrolling situations to help you complete your item. There's also a special type of innocent scroll called arc innocent scrolls, and they have the same function as innocent scrolls except that you get to keep the amount of star force enhancements on your equipment but they cost 10,000 spell traces to use once, and it only has a 30% success rate. And just a side tip, for cheap gear like CRA tops and bottoms, and just anything that's under 50 mil, it'll be cheaper just to buy a clean one instead of innocent scrolling if you fail a bunch of times. Now that we've gone over what scrolling is and how to scroll our items, let's take a look at some of the most commonly used scrolls in the game that players use on their weapons, armors, and accessories. I'll also give you guys some suggestions on which scrolls to use on each type of equipment based on your budget. I'll first go over which scrolls you can use on weapons. The first one we'll go over are spell traces. Spell traces are like your typical buffet. Monsters drop them everywhere, they're easy to obtain, and they give you a whole selection of scrolls that you can use. It's like how you can go to an affordable buffet, a pretty decent one, or a really nice one. Likewise, there are 70%, 30%, and 15% spell traces. I recommend using 70% spell traces for free-to-play players because when you're scrolling a weapon that's above level 120, and if you perfectly scroll that weapon with 100% spell traces versus 70% spell traces, there's a 10 stat and 20 attack difference. 
And actually, you can usually wait around not too long for a spell trace fever time event, which will increase the rates of success of 70% spell traces to 95%. And additionally, if you have some diligence and the 4% scroll success bonus from the guild skill, you're basically guaranteed to be able to pass all your 70% scrolls. In the same way, mid-spec players can opt to perfect their weapon with either 30% or 15% spell traces during fever time. 15% spell traces are actually pretty good for even some end spec players because they don't fall that behind in performance compared to the other scrolls that I'll be mentioning in a later part of this video. And even though 15% seems like a really low probability, combined with spell trace fever and bonus success rate from diligence and the guild skill, the success rate actually jumps all the way up to 39%. And next up we have prime scrolls. Prime scrolls are like a perfectly cooked medium rare A5 Wagyu New York strip steak. It's expensive, it's delicate, and if you overcook it too much, you can completely lose a good piece of meat. Maybe even get you fired from the kitchen if you mess it up. You can get them from the Marvel Machine, Philosopher Books, and the Auction House. And like how you need to set specific parameters and precautions to make sure you don't overcook a nice piece of steak, you should use protection scrolls if you don't want your item to boom if it fails. And you should use guardian scrolls because a scroll is removed from your inventory regardless of whether it was successful or not when used. So the Guardian Scroll will prevent you from losing the scroll if it fails and save you from spending more mesos to obtain another Prime Scroll. Also keep in mind that Guardians and Protection Scrolls are consumed when the Prime Scroll successfully enhances the item. So you're going to need to use one of each for each try. I would recommend waiting until there's a cash shop sale for those scrolls. Also make sure that the equip you're trying to Prime Scroll has 12 or less stars because Protection Scrolls do not work on equipment that has more than 12 stars. These scrolls are definitely more for NSpec users because of their cost. Next up we have Magical Scrolls. Magical Scrolls are like kombucha. Kombucha and other fermented teas became popular a few years back, and while most industry experts thought it might have been a fad, it's starting to become a staple in 2020. Magical Scrolls also came out last year, and it's starting to be used more commonly by some players. Most people still like to stick with Prime Scrolls, but Magical Scrolls are not a bad option if you don't want to go through the hassle of priming because Magical Scrolls have a 100% success rate, so you won't have to worry about using Protection or Guardian Scrolls. And on average, your weapon will end up with very similar stats to Prime Scrolled weapons. And lastly for weapons, we have X Scrolls. X Scrolls are like Caviar or Foie Gras. They're very difficult to obtain, and as a result, they demand a high premium to buy them. They have the best attack and all stat value of any scrolls in the game to use on a weapon, and they have a 100% success rate. This is really where we see the effect of diminishing returns. Just for an extra 1 or 2 attack, and an extra 2 all stats, each scroll will cost you billions of mesos. Now that we covered weapon scrolls, let's quickly go over armor scrolls. So similar to weapons, for most casual players, I would recommend using 70% spell traces during fever time to scroll your armors. For most mid-spec players, and even a few end-spec players, they tend to settle on 30% spell traces because anything beyond this can get pretty expensive. So there are Prime Scrolls for armor as well, and they tend to be even more expensive than weapon Prime Scrolls, primarily because there's a lot more armor pieces that players need to scroll compared to weapons. These are really good especially for classes like Xenon who utilizes all stats. There are also X Scrolls, and these give attack or magic attack on your armors, but like any other X Scrolls, they're really rare and expensive. One attack is equivalent to about 4-5 to five stat. So it's actually really effective in increasing your range compared to scrolls that just increase the stat. An instance I can think of for using this scroll is when you want an ICOG, a shield like the Terminus Defender. The Terminus shield doesn't come with attack naturally, so you can use a scroll to add a good chunk of attack stat onto the shield first. And now that the shield has an attack stat, you can use ICOGs to further increase that attack stat. Which brings me to talk about Incredible Chaos Scroll of Guinness Scrolls. I didn't mention the scroll yet, so I'll compare using the scroll to going to an expensive wine tasting event. You don't know how each bottle of wine will taste until you actually take the first sip. If you like it, you buy the wine. If you don't, move on to the next. Similarly, ICOGs can only be obtained from special event coin shops like the anniversary event going on right now. And each time they pass, they raise random stats of the equipment with values anywhere from 0 to 6. This means if you're really lucky, you might be able to raise 6 attack and plus 6 strength with a single scroll. Some ways you can use a scroll is either by scrolling a clean item with an ICOG and using innocent scrolls until you get plus 6 attack and plus 6 stat and you just finish scrolling the rest of the equip with ICOGs, hoping that you end up with decent attack and stat bonuses on average. 
Or you can do the same thing using Innocent Scrolls until you get plus 6 attack and plus 6 stack, and then for the rest of the remaining upgrade slots, you can use Return Scrolls from the Cash Shop. The Return Scroll allows you to choose between the before and after effects of a scroll upon using it, so if you're a masochist who likes to burn through money, you can keep using Icox until you get plus 6 attack and plus 6 stack for every single upgrade slot. Yes, every single slot. This method is extremely, extremely expensive. It costs an average of 150k NX for one upgrade slot. Yes, you heard me right. One enhancement will cost you a pair of AirPods or even a TV. Alright, and last but not least, I'll go over accessory scrolls. First up again, we have spell traces. For spell traces, they're definitely great if you're a casual player, but there are definitely better options out there, and I'll mention those next. So if you're a mid-spec player, these scrolls for attack for accessories are probably what you want to be looking for. Currently in Elysium, they're about 100 mil each, and since they can add 2 to 4 attack each, which is anywhere from about an 8 to 16 stat equivalent, these scrolls actually add a pretty good amount of stat for how much they cost. And these scrolls also have 100% pass rate to them. Wow! There are also premium scrolls for attack for accessory, and they're better than our previous scrolls because they can add anywhere from 4 to 5 attack each. They're much more expensive, but because there's less variability, you're guaranteed to add more attack to your accessory on average. There are also Prime Scrolls for accessories, and I'm personally not a big fan of using these Prime Scrolls on my equips because priming costs a lot, and I'd rather spend my money on attack scrolls that can be cheaper and at a higher stat equivalent. For Golux equips, which make up a majority of best in slot accessories, you want to use the Advanced Golux Scroll because they each add a whopping 4 attack and 3 all stack. There are also X accessory attack scrolls, and they're even better than premium scrolls for accessory for attack. But if you're going to try perfecting your accessory with the prices of these X scrolls, you might as well go for our last option, which is again, using ICOGS. Yes. You would use the same methods as we did with armors. It'll still be really expensive, but definitely a lot less because accessories tend to have lower upgrade counts. And although spell traces work on shoulder accessories, no armor or accessory scrolls will work on them. But ICOGS do. So you can take your time upgrading your shoulder because after you hammer them, they only have 3 upgrade slots. You can innocence them until you get the plus 6 attack and plus 6 stat. And then you can ICOG with return scrolls for the remaining 2 slots. Just a tip too, even though 2 return scrolls isn't a lot when using this method, they're still available in the reward shop. Now that should have covered everything we need to know. Oh my, alright fine, let's quickly go over those as well. For Android Hearts, you can pretty much throw any attack or magic attack scrolls on them, and they'll work just fine. If you don't care about money, you can even x-scroll your Android Heart, and end up with a heart with crazy high attack. But for most of the casual players, you might not even be able to afford a Fairy Heart or Titanium Heart, so you're left with either Lydium Hearts or Gold Hearts. Because they have low level requirements to equip, you can't get much attack from using spell traces on them. You're probably not going to want to use any expensive scrolls on them either, so if you're a free to play player, I would use the party quest scrolls for attack that you can get from the cross world party quest area. For both the mechanic mecha components and Evan dragon equips, no other scrolls will work on them except for chaos scrolls, so yeah, you can ICOG them too. <laughs> for pet equips, innocent scrolls and clean slates will not work on them, and depending on your budget, you can pick from these options. Well, we covered a lot in this video, and hopefully you got something out of it. I hope as I make more videos in the future, my editing skills can improve so that I can give you guys even better quality content. Thank you guys for taking some of your precious time to tune in, and if you thought this video was helpful, and you'd even recommend this video to your friends, please drop a like, comment, press that notification button, and subscribe. Happy mapling!